Uh, okay, hit it. Uh, so my name is August Yule, and I'm here to tell you about a unique veteran history and art project called Full Mag Veteran Stories Illustrated. At Full Mag, we interview military veterans and present their stories and their words in a series of publications that are part graphic novel and part military history magazine. We've interviewed dozens of veterans from World War II to the modern era. So far, we've presented first-person accounts of events such as the Doolittle Raid, the Battle of Okinawa, Operation Market Garden, liberation of the Philippines, on up to Afghanistan and Iraq, and everything in between. And we have many more interviews in the hopper for future volumes. Storytellers' words are brought to life by graphic artists using a variety of styles, from serial adventures and sequential art to the neon modern graphic novel. We use both pedigreed industry pros and emerging talent and in fact, several of the artists on the team of freelancers are veterans themselves. But this is not a pure graphic novel. We also present articles and essays by veteran authors and military historians that tie directly to the first person stories. For example, here, before we jump into two illustrated stories from Operation Market Garden, we provide the readers with an overview of that operation written by uh, paratrooper and author Mike McLeod, uh, who's from like Gallatin Gateway area. Although these stories certainly involve war, these are not war stories. These are the personal accounts of men and women, young and old, sharing their intimate stories with readers, and that takes guts and a leap of faith. In fact, many of these events took place decades ago, but maybe things that the veteran thinks about every single day. What is it like to be told you're going to do the drop into Japan? that you most likely will be killed or injured. And not only that, but you're handed an invasion map to drive the point home. What is it like to then learn that you don't have to do that? As a historian, I love this project because I know we're adding to the historic record. As an art fan, I just love this project. The art allows readers to immerse themselves into the unknown and associate with the unknown. This cover painting shows our storyteller and his crewmates walking into their B-26 for yet another mission out of North Africa, a mission from which they may not return, as has been the case with many of their friends. And I like to look at those faces. The first veteran I ever interviewed was David Thatcher, one of the last two little raiders. As a former airman myself, these men exist in the Pantheon, so I felt a little bit like when Chris Farley would interview Paul McCartney on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> but I, I didn't really have any reason to be nervous at all, because he and his wife Dawn were actually very welcoming. And in fact, since the dawn of mankind, cultures have honored their warriors in art. I'm talking about cave paintings, poetry, music, film, and so forth. And I've seen the artists put more into this project than they would a typical gig because they know they are telling a person's story. And we've received nothing but positive feedback from our veteran storytellers and their families. I never imagined being told I had a brain injury could be good news, but it was. It explained the missing pieces of my puzzle. That's a quote from our first female veteran storyteller as she recounts her journey from high school to the turret of a Humvee in Iraq and ultimately her years-long recovery from exposure to an IED. And here's the man who has everything. Leonard and his wife ended up with several stores in Pensacola as the fashionable clothing destination for teens and young women. But to achieve this dream, his story begins during the Depression delivering bagels on the streets of Brooklyn and takes us through the Philippine jungle as an 11th Airborne paratrooper. They say everyone has a story to tell, and you know that story might get interesting when it begins with the storyteller being struck by lightning. The nurse at the piston ring plant here actually said our storyteller was dead, but turns out he actually was alive, and he went on to join the Navy and found himself in the Yu Min forest in Vietnam, which is another story altogether. The visual storytelling is very impactful, so we use various techniques to remind readers that these are indeed the veterans' own words. For example, in this six-page black and white treatment, the reader is almost a fly on the wall as a storyteller talks to his friend while they get tattoos in San Francisco in 1945. And of course, there's a story behind those tattoos as well. Or in some cases, the storyteller includes photographs of the events or sometimes the story begins as a traditional magazine treatment and then jumps into the sequential art. So we combine different techniques and blend in the visual storytelling, but uh, always in the veteran's own words. Uh, this, this project is actually made in Montana two ways. Although our storytellers are from all across the US, uh, just over half are Montana veterans. And uh, this is also um, printed here in Montana. 
And that manufacturing relationship is so important that we actually give a shout out in both words and art in one of the narrator pages here in, in volume two. Sometimes people ask me if Full Mag is a nonprofit, and I tell them, no, it's just unprofitable. So, <laughs> yeah. So far, we've, I've spent over $40,000 in page rates to artists. That's the single biggest expense by far of this project. And so that when this project is to break even, it's going to be through fair treatment to artists. This is not just a collection of stories. It's a cohesive artistic journey from cover to cover. And in a similar fashion to perhaps, say, like a Surfer magazine or Vogue magazine, where the awesome ads of our sponsors add to the overall flow and experience. And of course, without our corporate nonprofit sponsors, this project simply does not exist. When a veteran shares his or her story, I feel the burden to do the best job possible, which involves the interviews and transcribing and the research to the artists, pencils and inks and colors and lettering, to the writers, articles, and lots and lots and lots of proofreading. The thousands of hours involved means that at best we can publish one volume per year. All of this is done by a team of veterans, artists, historians, authors, sponsors, and supporters, but none of it would be possible without the veterans who share their stories and more importantly, none of this would be possible without those who step forward to guarantee our freedom of expression. And that allows us all to express ourselves in the arts. So I've learned a lot from the first volume to the second and gotten very positive feedback from the veteran storytellers and their families. And since we already have a lot more stories in the hopper for future volumes, I hope to keep this thing going. So if you're interested in some amazing stories or being a sponsor, please visit our website to pick up some copies or reach out to me directly in a Thank you for your time this evening.